What is going on guys? My name is Hussein and in this video I want to explain why do we need digital certificates or those certificates that we basically when you communicate to a secure web server you get this beautiful secure connection and we get this sketch.io which is the website I'm using right now it's it's uh, signed by this certificate authority and it's uh, started by this why do you need the stuff? why? why do you need the, the certificate? all that stuff so if you're interested, stay tuned. All right, guys, so if you know this channel, we always ask why, we don't ask what, because if I ask you what is a certificate, you can always define, but why do we really need it? So we now, in this video, I'm going to start pushing into the reason why did we invent certificate, because there is always a problem, and you solve it in a certain way. So how about we jump into it? So the, there are, here's, here's a client. Right, and let's say this is a, a JavaScript client. I don't know, fish command, C sharp client, anything. Right, it's about to make a get request to a web server. I don't know, Apache, right, or or uh, um, Nginx, right, anything. So it's about to consume some content from this web server. It want to send a get request, right, right, and we know that. We cannot just send information just in the plain text because some cat in here can sniff easily because it's not encrypted. So what do we need to do? We need to encrypt it. Well, how do we encrypt stuff, guys? There are two types of encryption, symmetric and asymmetric. But let's let's stick with symmetric. It's a key, right? Just like a, a a vault. When you have a key, right? The key can open the vault, right? And can also lock it. So the same key locks and unlock. That's the best encryption algorithms, right? Symmetric keys because it's way faster, right? So we have, that's good, okay. So all we need to do is for this guy and this guy to have the same key and call today. Well, there's a problem. How do you generate a key here, right? And the same key also here, right? That's a problem. You might say, well, I'm gonna generate it in the client and send it over, right? But the moment you send it over, Karen can pick it up, right? We don't want Karen to pick up our symmetric key because the moment it does, it, if he picks it up, then yeah, she can see everything uh, behind uh, uh, that we communicate with, right? So we cannot use symmetric key like that, right? So what we did is we invented the idea of public key encryption, okay? And public key encryption is really simple. If the server gets two keys, one red key and one beautiful blue key, right? This is called the private key. This is called the public key. Private to public. So either way works. If you can use the public key to encrypt, and if you use that, only the private key can decrypt, right? And vice versa. You can use the private key to, to encrypt, and the public key also will decrypt, right? So it's a it's a it's a flipped operation. So the public key can be shared with everyone, right? In this case, here's what we can do. Let's just run through the scenario, right? And all right. So how about we run the same algorithm here? So it's okay. The client will generate the symmetric key that we want to agree upon, right? Says so okay. This is the golden key, the green key. All right. So I have the green key. This is the symmetric key. I need to send this somehow to the server. Here's how what we can do. The server, the client will say, all right, I want to establish a communication with you, sir, but it's not going to send the symmetric key. It's just going to say, hey, I want to establish a communication with you. This is, by the way, TLS, and we talked about TLS, but this is going to be a different version of TLS. It says, hey, I want to communicate with you. And the, ser the server says, okay, here's my public key, son, right? That is my public key take it take my public key beautiful take it and use that key to encrypt the symmetric key and send it over so the, the client does exactly that so the client will take that symmetric key and then it's going to encrypt it with the red key which is the public key right and now, if it encrypts it with the public, and now when it takes that, the encrypted version of the symmetric key is going to send it over. Obviously, guys, this is the old 
method. It's not recommended for uh, perfect forward secrecy reason, but I want to explain things from the startup. From the from the beginning, right? So I take that and send it over. All right, and guess what? If the server receives that, right? If the service read that, it actually can use the blue key, which is the private key, it to actually take that key and then have it. Now that both of them will have the same key. And guess what? If Karen starts sniffing here, she will get that key, but she will get that text that has the encrypted symmetric key, but guess what? She cannot do anything about it. She cannot decrypt it because it's, uh, again, she doesn't have the private key of the server. So that's one way of information and they can send it over. Well, and then once you have this information, both both parties can start communicating. So I'm gonna start extending my get request. I'm gonna encrypt it with the beautiful lock and I send it over and now the, the stuff will be encrypted right so that's how we do encryption what's then there's no certificates or anything right what's the problem with this well here's the problem guys if i now did the same thing here right i have i'm going to make a request to initiate and I, and the server will send me what they will send me the the server will send me the public key right it's public key that's awesome right that's not bad, right? However, how do I know that sneaky Karen right here, Karen is yellow, and Karen also have a public key and also have a private key. As gonna, I don't know, pink. This is the private key of Karen. This is the public key of Karen. And Karen intercepted that message and says, Nope, server, I am going to send to the client my key, right? So now, the moment you do that, how does the client know that this is actually Karen's key or the server's key? There's no way to know that this, this key belongs to the server or this key belongs to anyone else. That's why we needed some sort of a certificate i don't know how to draw a certificate is that supposed to be a certificate that's supposed to be a certificate that proves that this public key belongs to the server and meet certificate authorities that signs those stuff and we talked about certificate authority so that's why we need a certificate authority so here's what we do with certificate authority let's go let's run through this again right so here's what do we do so what the server does says okay hey certificate authority which is a third party here yo i have a public key and i have a private key i'm not gonna send you my private key i made the mistake i said i i accidentally said in the other video that i send the private key that's not correct it's just it's a, it's just a slip we send the public key of the server right so that's the red key. So the server communicates with the certificate before, before it does everything, before it does anything, right? Let's just remove all that stuff, right? So the server, before it does anything, it actually communicates with the certificate authority to generate a certificate for, for its public key. So it says, okay, here's my public key, certificate authority. I want you to sign it, okay? So the certificate authority will return with a signed certificate and here's how it looks like it's basically uh, it's a certificate right it has the server name which is i don't know enginex.com whatever the server name here and it says hey this is the public key that's the public key and here's a proof that we actually signed it and it's like we added a signature and what the heck is this and that is actually the this the certificate authority of private key right so the certificate authority has two keys as well <laughs> this is the private key and this is let's pick another car i'm running out of colors here so that's the public key of the certificate authority, right? And that's the private key. So that's the public, and that's the private. So the 
the certificate authority uses the private key of its private key to encrypt to actually sign which is almost like encryption almost right and then signs that public key and then put add it to the to the certificate authority to the to the end of the certificate so now it's signed so now and guess what this certificate is also linked to its to an intermediate certificate which is says okay this is actually i uh, this is the certificate authority certificate because we need to also trust the certificate authority right so that certificate authority also have a certificate a, a public key it puts the public key here and then also there is like a it goes up up of the chain until we get to the root certificate that, that's the root certificate right so this, there is a chain of certificates right so when the client gets this chain when when the, when we start communicating and says okay i want to communicate with you it says oh i'm not communicating with you anything before i send you the certificate so the the certificate this this stuff all this stuff is being sent to the client and the client the first thing it does it verifies the certificate and how it does it do it it says okay this is your certificate in nginx.com which is your server right oh yeah okay i did receive it so even if uh, yeah i did receive it okay so i'm gonna take that that's a public key that's your public key but i'm not gonna use it yet i'm gonna see okay what is your certificate authority oh it is whatever it is a let's encrypt right i'm gonna use the public key of the certificate and i'm gonna encrypt that stuff and i'm gonna see will i get the same content right or is the other way around it's either it can decrypt that and gonna match the public key if it matches that means oh that's actually correct and then the client will also verify that this is actually correct by going to the root certificate and says okay what's your public key i'm going to use it to encrypt and make sure that the signature of the certificate authority also valid goes it does that up until it reaches the root now the root doesn't have a parent so there is no signature here it's self-signed it's actually signing itself right so if it's signing itself so how do you trust you the root certificate is actually installed here right in your operating system it's just installed on every machine so if one of those routes is expired or it is invalid or it's not there then you're gonna get this error where you said okay let's show you this error here it is untrusted root right if you click on this guy this is has been signed it says like hey bad ssl and untrusted root so this thing is actually untrusted it's a bad ssl untrusted root right so this this might be okay and it has been signed a server but this guy is not trusted because it's not installed on our server i mean you can do and we, some people do that right you can just go ahead and install that on your machine and everything will work but you gotta know what you're doing man before you do that Right, and some organizations, some work organization actually allow forces you to install the, their root certificate so they can look at everything you do. Right, all right, guys. So that was like a quick video. Why do we really need certificates? Right, and even if Karen intercepted this and tried to respond back with her own certificate because she cannot fake all this chain. Right, there is no way. Right, so she can build her own chain, but. Got tough luck coming up with a certificate authority that will sign nginx.com right with her public key nobody will give her that right and there's like one case where a certificate authority where private key was exposed and people started issuing certificates that are that are valid for google.com and gmail.com and it was like really crazy back then, right? So that was like, that was one bad time where certificate happened. Okay, so that was like a short video talking about certificate, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like if you like it. Subscribe to for more software engineering, back-end engineering videos. And I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome.